Hi, this is Dr. Rudresh. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Medical Microbiology Guy. Please subscribe and press the bell button for more videos. Hi, in this session, we will discuss the introduction to medical parasitology. A parasite is an animal or plant which lives in, on or upon another organism and draws its nutrient directly from it and study of the parasite and its interaction with the host is known as parasitology and study of those parasites which infest the human beings is known as the medical parasitology the parasites can be divided into two types the one which lives on the surface of the body which is called as an ectoparasite like lice, mite, tick, fleas and so on. And an endoparasite which lives within the host. Example, hookworm and roundworm which lives in the intestine. The endoparasites we can classify it into an obligate parasite where it requires a host for its survival and multiplication. Say for example, Toxoplasma gondii which cannot live outside the host. A facultative parasite is one which can live freely or inside the host. Example is Negleria foliare which is a protozoan parasite which can live in the water as well as it if it gains an excess into the body then it can cause the infection aberrant parasite is one which locates in a site where it cannot live usually this is a parasite of animal if it infects human being it wanders here and there causing larva migrants Host is an organism which harbors the parasite and provides nutrition and shelter. There are two types of host. Usually these are the viva question. What is a definitive host? A definitive host is one who harbors the adult parasite or most highly developed form of the parasite or where the multi parasite multiplies sexually. This definitive host can be a human or non-human. An intermediate host is one which harbor the asexual form of the parasite. The intermediate host is essential for the completion of the life cycle of the parasite. Example, sets a fly for trypanosomes. A reservoir host is the one which harbor the parasite and also serves as an important source of infection to other susceptible hosts. The paratonic host or a transport host or a carrier host is one which harbor the parasite without undergoing any disease but will carry the parasite to the other host. Natural host is one for which the parasite is going to cause infection naturally. Amplifier host is one in which the parasite multiplies exponentially and will be transmitted to another susceptible host. There are three types of relationship between the host and parasite. A symbiotic relationship is one where both the parasite and the host are interdependent without causing any harm. Whereas commensalism is one in which the parasite derives benefit without causing any injury to the host. The parasitic relationship is one in which the parasite derives the benefit and the host will suffer from injuries caused by the parasite. There are various sources from which human beings can acquire the parasitic infections. Soil water, food, insects 
animals and also man himself can act as source of infection for various parasites the parasites can be transmitted by various routes oral route is the most common route for transmission of the parasites the person can ingest food water or vegetables contaminated with the feces or he can ingest a raw or undercooked meat raw or undercooked fish or crab ingestion of a raw or undercooked water plants or ingestion of an intermediate host itself will transmit the parasite to the host penetration of skin and mucous membrane is one of the method of transfer for few parasites example the filariform larva of hookworm can penetrate the sole and get entry into the body the inoculation by arthropod vector is again a important mode of transmission for some of the parasites the one such example is anopheles transmitting the malaria some parasites can be transmitted through sexual route example the most common one transmitted through sexual contact is trichomonas vaginalis followed by entamoeba histolytica and giardia parasites which can be transmitted from mother to baby are the toxoplasma gondii and malaria parasites which are transmitted through blood transfusion are plasmodium species babesia species toxoplasma species leishmania species etc auto infection is one in which the contaminated hands or by the process of reverse peristalsis the infection will be re established in the same host now let's briefly see how the parasites will complete their life cycle a life cycle is a process of parasite growth and development this can be of two types a direct life cycle or an indirect life cycle in the direct life cycle parasite requires only one host and it completes the development in one host and will be transmitted to another host without having an intermediate host example entamoeba histolytica indirect or complex life cycle is one in which the parasite requires two or more hosts one is called as a definitive host and another is called as an intermediate host example leishmania species here an intermediate host is the sand fly vector which transmits the infection from one person to another person so this is an example of direct life cycle and an indirect life cycle so direct life cycle here only one host is involved whereas an indirect life cycle the two hosts are involved just briefly we will see how the injury will be caused to the host by parasites the pathogenesis can be due to the mechanical trauma in which the various parasitic forms can cause the injury example eggs can cause injury in case of cystosoma mansoni in intestine cystosoma hematobium in bladder paragonimus westermanni in lungs and facial hepatica in liver larvae can also initiate some of the pathogenic mechanisms example hookworm larva in the lungs can cause pneumonitis adult worms can cause the disease example ascaris attached to the intestinal mucosa and heavy infestation sometimes bring about some of the complications associated with, that, with them some of the larval forms or adult forms can cause a space occupying lesions example a head attack cyst and if the parasite 
reaches the tissue spaces there it provokes the inflammatory reaction bringing up the the lesions at the site of entry of the parasite example entamoeba histolytica which burrows the gut mucosa causing the ulcer some of the parasitic infections are associated with the elevated eosinophilic count leading to the allergic manifestations and parasites like cystosoma hematobium can cause bladder cancer whereas clonarchis sinensis can cause hepatocellular cancer all these points which i have mentioned in this two slides they are usually viva questions hence the should, student should be able to answer these a brief overview on the laboratory diagnosis of parasitic infections the parasitic diagnosis can be done by macroscopy and microscopy of various specimens the specimen of choice depends upon the type of parasite which is suspected and the site of the infection of the parasite say for example if there is a suspicion of bloodstream infection by a parasite usually the bloodstream infections will be caused by malaria leishmania trypanosoma or some of the 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 blood nematodes like uh, the ucheraria bancrofti these parasite they will be in the blood hence the specimen of choice should be blood for demonstration of the parasite so those parasite which infest the intestine you have to collect the stool specimen and the one which infests the urinary bladder or kidney we have to go for the urine collection and the one which causes the genital organs we have to collect the genital specimens if it is causing the cns infection we have to collect the csf and if it is causing the lung infection we have to collect the sputum so to demonstrate the parasite we are going to collect the specimen according to the clinical suspicion and site of infection usually culture is done for research purposes if we want to extract the antigens or if we want to study the pathogenesis then we are going to cultivate them generally it is not used for the diagnostic purpose there are some parasites for which culture may establish the diagnosis there are various methods of cultivating the parasites we can divide them into exogenic culture monogenic culture and polygenic culture exogenic culture means without adding any bacterial suspension you are going to grow the parasite in a synthetic medium monogenic means we are going to add one bacteria either e coli klebsiella so this bacteria will be added to the culture medium and the parasite will be inoculated polygenic means you are going to add more than one bacteria to the basal medium for cultivation of the parasites immunodiagnosis here we can do some skin skin tests which are available for the parasitic diagnosis or we can go for serological test these serological test we can either detect an antigen or antibody against the parasite if the parasite causes invasive infection then detecting antibody in the patient serum can help in diagnosis of the condition molecular methods can be used for diagnosis of parasites the methods like using a dna probe pcr we can diagnose the parasitic infection zoon diagnosis is done for those infections which are transmitted through arthropod vectors we can isolate few parasites by inoculating them into the animals and other modalities of diagnosis like imaging techniques is useful for diagnosis of parasitic infections now we'll briefly look into the taxonomy of parasites according to the binomial nomenclature of linnaeus the parasites are named by genus and species the name of the parasites has been given based on the discoverer 
based on the geographical area where they were found or based on the host in which the parasite infests. The systematic classification or systematic taxonomical unit for a parasite will be in this order. Kingdom, subkingdom, phylum, subphylum, superclass, subclass, order, suborder, superfamily, family, genus and species. Parasites are broadly classified under the kingdom Animalia into subkingdom protozoa and helms. Protozoans are unicellular parasites whereas helminths are multicellular parasites. So this is picture showing a unicellular protozoa and multicellular helminths. The helminths are further classified into cystodes, nematodes and trematodes. The cystodes are dorsoventrally flattened tape like worms whereas trematodes are dorsoventrally flattened leaf like worms and nematodes are thread like worms thank you for watching this video please subscribe and press the bell button for more videos